On the 18th of December, 1900, Queen Victoria journeyed to the Isle of Wight to spend Christmas at Osborne House, as was her custom. She complained of feeling particularly weary and tired, and the joy of the festive season was marred by the sudden death of the Queen's close friend and Lady of the Bedchamber, Lady Jane Churchill, who was found dead in her bed on Christmas morning. Though few people realised it, Queen Victoria herself was steadily declining. She ate little and slept little, and by mid-January she appeared to be becoming forgetful and apathetic, until eventually she was confined to bed. As the seriousness of her condition began to be realised, members of her large family began to arrive. One man, to whom an invitation had not been sent, was her grandson, Kaiser Wilhelm, whose erratic nature and perceived pomposity had made him very unpopular with his English relations. When, however, the Kaiser realised that his grandmother was dying, he hurried to Osborne, and, determinedly unobtrusive, he waited patiently to be allowed to see her. He had always been particularly close to the Queen, and his desire to say goodbye was quite genuine. The Queen drifted in and out of consciousness, and as the Kaiser supported her on his arm, she died at 6.30 in the evening, on the 22nd of January, 1901. On February the 1st, her body was taken to the mainland, on the royal yacht Alberta, for burial beside beloved Albert at the mausoleum in Windsor. I cannot believe that she is really gone, that we shall never see her any more. It seems impossible, wept her granddaughter, the young Tsarina of Russia, whose fourth pregnancy had prevented her from making the journey to England. How I envy you, she wrote to her sister Victoria, being able to see beloved grandmamma being taken to her last rest. A memorial service was held for the Queen in St. Petersburg, where for the first time since her arrival in Russia, the Tsarina wept in public. Another granddaughter, Crown Princess Marie of Romania, was also deeply distressed at being prevented from accompanying her husband to the funeral. She sensed the implications of the loss of the Queen, and in a letter to her mother described her longing to return to England, to see it all again if only for a day or two, to have a last peep at the old house, Without dear old granny the last link is cut off. I tell you, it is inconceivable sorrow for me. For Princess Alice of Albany, who had returned from Germany for the funeral, it was an equally devastating experience. I had come to regard her as permanent and indestructible, she wrote, like England and Windsor Castle. But it was, perhaps, the future Queen Mary who most accurately expressed the country's sense of bewilderment. The thought of England without the Queen is dreadful even to think of. God help us all. In little more than a decade, Queen Victoria's large family, once so united by the Queen who was known as the Grandmother of Europe, would be torn apart by the ravages of the First World War. Even so, Queen Victoria's legacy continues. Today there is hardly a city in England that does not have a statue of her and her name lives on in cities, waterfalls, districts and provinces across the globe.